Everybody, if you could stretch out your hands towards our friend. Father, it is a high honor for me to be standing here with this man of God. I, I, can, I, I can hardly believe that I get to do it. Father, give him every bit of house anointing, Lord God, that you would normally give me today to speak your word to our hearts. As for God, that every one of us would be open, would be receptive. Jesus, we want to leave here different than how we showed up. We love you today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody give this man a huge round of applause. <laughs> huge honor today. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I need. Thank you very much. It's a joy to have the privilege of coming here again and uh, for the friendship and fellowship God has brought us into with Pastor Mark. It's been a joy. When uh, we met in San Francisco and we fell in love, as he said, I just felt there's something in, in Pastor Mark that God is brewing. And here we want to give God praise that our friendship had grown. He had come to Nigeria, he had come to our home, and he had seen where we come from, and he has he accepted our humble abode and laid his head uh, under our roof. And we want to appreciate that. And we're here again at the instance of his hospitality and fellowship. When we were thinking of this meeting and he offered graciousness and said, why don't we come here? Why don't we use this facility? And it has been a joy. I want to appreciate you and appreciate the entire church, the CRBC, for having us here. We are very, very grateful to you and to God. We appreciate your right hand of fellowship. We saw several of you running around to help us. And again, like he has announced, we have become part of you. We have come from different parts of the states and from Canada and different brethren from different parts. They will never forget this place. They will continue to pray that what God started in our midst here as if Jacob went to Peniel and that was where the sun rose upon him. This place will continue to remain precious to us and God will bring increase to the work here. And that under your leadership and oversight, you will see revival come. Amen. We appreciate the worship team. Your songs have been very deeply inspiring. On Friday, they just took us to worship Jesus. And that was overwhelming. Want to appreciate that. The Lord will continue to increase your voice and grant you unlimited entrance into his very presence. Now, I'm going to bring a little addition to what we have been doing. I will ask you to stand up and sing a hymn. <laughs> yeah. You're going to sing a hymn. On Christ, the solid rock, my hope is built on nothing else than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground sinking sand. If they can place it up for us, that's good. But if not, 
hymn sheets are being shared so that you can join us to sing it. My hope is built on nothing else than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the soul, solid rock I stand, on all the ground is sinking sand. All all the ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to I rest on his unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the soul, solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Is all this covenant is blood? Support me in in the whelming flood when all around my soul is wet. He then is on my hope and stay on Christ the soul, solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Let's to stand before the throne on Christ the solid rock. Christ the soul, solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is. Please do the chorus two times with me. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is. And finally, now, oh, on Christ the Son. <clears throat> ah, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground. Is sinking sand. Father, we stand before you this morning. We confess that only on you, the solid rock, we stand. We confess that all other ground, the ground of academics, the ground of intellectualism, the ground of psychology, the ground of philosophy, the ground of good works, the ground of philanthropism, all of this, they are sinking sand. We dare not trust any sweetest frame, but we only lean on Jesus and the finished work at Calvary. So Lord, this morning we ask that in every eye and stormy gale, you will be the anchor for our lives. Amen. When all others around our soul gives way, when it looks as if we are alone and we are passing through dark tunnel, we are sure that you are there. Our eyes will be fixed upon you. We will lay hold on you who never fails. We will look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you. Now Lord send forth your word to us and let it mix with faith in our hearts. And release us again oh God to run the race that is set before us. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated and God bless you. Will you please quickly turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and for our meditation and the brief exhortation we are going to take as we both uh, draw conclusions to our weekend meeting, we will take verse 1 and verse 2. We won't be able to go beyond that this morning but it will be sufficient for us as we go on. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, the two Bible verses before us is coming almost at the end of a long, long, elaborate discourse in this book of Hebrews. And you know that the book of Hebrews from chapter 1 made a very critical, very critical announcement. Say, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But he has in these last days spoken to us by his son, who is the express image of his person, who is the exact copy of himself, who having purged us of our sin, and having gone to the cross of Calvary to lay down his life so that we might be redeemed. And he has resurrected from the dead and God had given him a name that's above every name. And is now here seated by the right hand of God. For God has said to him, sit thou down at my right side until I make your enemies thy footstool. May I quickly say to you that we serve Jesus who is seated up there and who God has made the Lord and the Christ. And he has given him a name that is above every name and that in his name every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that he is the Lord. You wonder why he is still sitting up there in heaven. The father said to him, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Say, I will send forth the rod of your strength out of Zion and you shall rule in the midst of your enemies. For in the days of your power, thy people shall be willing. Now, what exactly is the Lord wanting us to take note of as we press on with our pilgrimage, with our walk with God, and with our experience of His grace while we are still here, expecting His glorious appearing? What are the instructions that we do need to take note of? The first thing that I'd like you to note and I think I should say it very strongly and yet very simply. You are not the first in the race. You are not the first in the race. Others, others have gone ahead. They have run the race. So they have already established 
both a pattern and a standard. And because the race that is set before us is already established and God had admitted several brothers and sisters which you know their stories, you can read their biographies and you can see how they ran and where they ended. Because you are not the first to start the race, may I now say to you, even though the race is peculiar to you, you are not a pioneer. What does that imply? You see, pioneers, they can do it as they like. They can create a path as it is convenient for them. Pioneers, because they've never seen anything like that before, they are the ones who crafted what they decided to do. But I must say to you, brothers and sisters, this morning, you are not a pioneer. You are not the beginner of this race. You are not the author of this faith. But grace has brought you into this race and you have been enlisted by the grace of God. So it then becomes incumbent upon you and upon me to run the race according to rule. The Bible says no man competes in an athletic race hoping to win the crown except he does what? He runs lawfully. We have come into a generation where people have mistakenly thought that they could design or devise the faith as it suits them. We have come to a generation where anybody stands up and thinks it could affect the gospel and redefine the gospel and rearrange the gospel as it suits him. That is a very, very unfortunate mistake. It is important, and I need to say that before you go this morning, that you are not the first in the race. The race that is set before us, others have run it. Others have jeopardized their lives and they have fitted into the rules, into the standard, and into the purposes that God set for this race. So it is important to know that though you are unique, though God is dealing with you personally, and though the church is so real and so fresh, and that you are a particular member of the body of Christ, may I now say to you, you cannot, you have no right to disaffect or disarrange or add or subtract from that which is already established. If it is the race to glory, then it had been set. And I would just need to exhort you this morning that you will run the race that had been set before us. Run it with patience. Run it with perseverance. Run it according to the rule. Now, why do I need to start like that? It is to inform you also that because you are not the first in the race, others have already run the race. And since God is not a respecter of persons, he does not have double standard. He cannot use a standard for men that have run the race and jeopardize their lives and come and short measure the standard for me. 
it will be unrighteousness to God. He will not do it. And God will not have a reason to apologize to those that have run the race. When the standard says, Father, we thought you told us that this is how to run the race. Why are you bringing Bile in? And he has not followed the rule of the race. And God will stand up and say, oh, oh, brother Paul, I dearly, dearly apologize. That you see, in the course of time, I had to change my mind. Because I found that the new generation of Americans and Nigerians and all the people that want to come to heaven, they are asking me to readjust and do something that is peculiar to them. So I apologize, Brother Paul. God cannot do that. Please settle it in your mind. If it is heaven you are going, there is only one way there. So the exhortation this morning said, Wherefore, seeing we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, they have run the race. But you know why the race is not concluded with them? Is that they finished their race. But they are waiting for the rest of us to finish the race before their coronation. So all of them are waiting for the time of glory. And they are saying, we cannot yet glorify you because your colleagues are still coming. Oh, that is what makes this matter a serious matter. Can you imagine that Mark, Paul, with all he did, was not yet, the crown is yet waiting. And the only reason is because Mark and Billy Akani, who is their colleague in this race, are yet to come. Can you imagine? These men that serve God with all their lives. God said, yes, give them their white robe to wear. But the day of their glory has to be postponed until Bile Akane and these other brothers who are partakers of the same race and of the same kingdom and of the same anointing. Until they come, we must wait for them. It gives me a very sober feeling. That men are waiting. Waiting for me to finish. So my cry this morning, Lord, help me to finish well. Because of space of time, permit me to go from there. In that we have a cloud of witnesses. What should I do? Let us lay aside. Brothers, lay aside every weight and every weight and the sin we so easily beset us. Things that can easily trap you. Things that can easily turn you out of the way. Please, brother, lay it aside. The reason is because there is no space for extra luggage. You see, when I was coming from Nigeria, I first had some meetings in the UK, and you don't know what happened. When you are coming from Nigeria to the UK, the baggage allowance allows you to have two bags, 23 kg each, plus carry-on bag, and your computer. So we parked. But I kept reminding my wife. <laughs> if we are only stopping in the UK. We have all the baggage allowance. But we are coming to the US. Only one bag allowance. So when we are about to come. What did you do Sister Shade? What did you do? You lay aside anything that is weighty. 
Because we are looking for only 23 kg. Anything that has weight and is not necessary. What did we do? We put it aside. If anybody came around and said, Abraham Bileo, we thank God for your coming. Can, can we give you this gift? I told my wife, I said, yes. Let's appreciate the gift, but we cannot take it. Only one bag allowance. 23 kg is the rule of the airline. We have conformed to the rule of the airlines. How terrible will it be that you will not conform to the rule of going to heaven? What explanation will you give to God? Data airlines, they put their rule. And I have obeyed it. Many good things that I love, but which will only constitute weight on my journey. The question I'm asking is that, do we need it? Can we not do without it? My wife said, yes, we can do without this. Okay, put it aside. Can we get it when we get to America? Say yes, yes, so we don't need to carry it along. Drop. Friends, lay apart. Every weight. When we talk weight, weight does not necessarily need to be seen. But it's a force of gravity that slows you down. They may be good. But it is not a necessity if you want to make your race. You need to travel light. You need to look into your lives. What are the things that I love but it's not necessary for my journey to heaven? Lay it aside. What are the things that look attractive but it does not contribute to my journey? What does the Holy Ghost say this morning? Lay it apart. Some of these may be friends. There are some friends that constitute a weight on your journey. There are some acquaintances that every time you go to relate with them, they slow you down. They introduce some complications into your life. The race is already set. We cannot adjust it. You can only adjust yourself. You can adjust your relationship. You can adjust your appetite. You can adjust all those things that is an added weight. Lay it apart. Why did the Bible distinguish between weight and the sin? It's because not all weights are sinful. And so I meet many Christians and say, but is it a sin? Is it a sin? I say, it's not a sin, but it's a weight. It doesn't have to be a sin. Paul said, all things are lawful to me, but not all things are expedient. So if I discover that eating meat will become a stumbling block for my journey and for the people that God wants me to help on my journey, then I will never eat meat again. The reason is because meat for the belly. Belly for the meat. Both of them will perish. That's how to be a kingdom value man. A man who is checking everything in the light of the race. Lay apart every weight. Every weight. And what makes it a weight is that it's a weight. That's what it is. Anything that is weighing you down from flying with God, lay it apart. Anything that makes your journey to heaven more cumbersome than the necessary, the necessary unavoidable issues that you must carry along, lay it apart. As a preacher, the weight that will not let you arrive at the fullness of God's call on your life. Do what? Lay it apart. If we do that, what next do we do? 
looking unto Jesus. And why? It's because Jesus has given us a complete, totally relevant life instruction for running the race. Jesus is the way and if you want me to say he is the manual for running the race. It's very interesting that the other day Dioye was bringing us from uh, Vincent's house to this place and I saw he carried his navigator and he's punching it. I thought I said you ought to have known the ways I were just in case so that we don't miss anything. <laughs> you have become so used with your tom tom. <laughs> it guides you everywhere. Turn left, turn right, go forward for five miles. At the roundabout, take the fourth exit. You got familiar with that. How will you not be familiar? With the navigation, the divine navigation for your race. How do you hope to go to a place that you have never been before without taking your map? The way to glory and the one that has been there before, Jesus, he has given us critical instruction on how to run the race. So looking unto Jesus. The author, that is the designer, he designed the race, he authored it and so authorized it. All the principles behind the game and the race were his creation. So you cannot look to him and get confused. Looking unto Jesus, the author, and what? And the finisher. Of our faith. And what is his example? When we are saying. Lay apart. Do you know Jesus himself? The Bible said. For the joy that was set before him. Because he really really want to win the crown himself. He himself was looking for the joy that God has promised him. So what did he do? He endured the cross. So that he can finish well. So that he can wear the crown. So that he can become the Lord. He endured the cross. Jesus paid the price. For the glory. In which he's sitting now. So when. People were laughing at him. And he did not regard it. When people were jeering at him. And they were criticizing and saying, what are you talking about? And he did not allow shame to make him ashamed. Because he knew that he, will, he must win the race. If Jesus did that, is it too much for you to be exalted this morning? That as you are going running the race, look unto Jesus for navigation, for direction. For example, look unto Jesus for a pattern of how to run. He despised the shame. Hallelujah. Can I conclude by saying, Jesus was so focused on where he was going. The Bible says he set his face like a flint. In fact, the Samaritans were annoyed because... When it was time for him to go to Jerusalem, to go to the cross, he set his face like a flint. The Samaritan said, Kai, the way this man is fixing his eyes, he's not, going to, he's not going to do anything with us. He has no time for us again. We will not allow him to pass. You remember his disciples came and said, let's call fire on them. They said, no, 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 no. You are wasting time. How do you start calling fire on people? When I'm on a journey to glory. And I need to pass through the cross. Please leave them alone. I didn't see Jesus 
diverting to fight useless battles. I never saw Jesus get himself distracted into useless argument that the Pharisees were bringing up to him. He knew where he was going. He despised the shame. He endured the cross. Today, he is now seated at the right hand of God. May the Lord help you. Finally, finally, Hebrews 12. We just read, and I will ask you to jump up on your feet as we pray together. Hebrews 12, are you there? Now look at the word of God. Verse 12, I mean verse 22. I just read. But you have come unto Mount Zion. And unto the city of the living God. You have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of angels. You have not come to shadows. Whereas people like Moses, they, they were called to minister unto shadows. Even their ministry unto shadow was so glorious. They were quaking and shaking because you must not make a mistake. If anybody misbehaved around the, around the mount, he was slaughtered immediately. So they were very careful not to miss anything. But we have not come unto Mount Sinai. We have not come to shadows. We have come to Jesus. We have come. Look at where we have come. We have come to Mount Zion. Where there is deliverance and holiness. We have come unto the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly. Of the church of the firstborn. Which are written in heaven. To God the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's where we have come. Permit me to tell you. Thank God for CRBC. But may I inform you. You have not come to a local CRBC. You have come to the general assembly. The church of the firstborn. To the spirits of men made perfect. May I tell you, being a member of this Bible church is wonderful. But being a member of this assembly is only a little issue in case you are not a member of the church of the firstborn, the general assembly. That would be dangerous. There are people whose names are in local church registers. But their names are not in the book of the Lamb. Written in heaven. That's dangerous. It's dangerous not to be sure that you are preparing for the general assembly. Local assembly, we may have local standards. Say so now, local church, this is what we do. No problem. If this is our destination. But because you are coming to the general assembly. The church of the firstborn. That contains all those who have met the Lord including Stephen. And people like Joseph. Who refused to fornicate for 10 minutes. And were cast into prison for 13 years. And they refused to succumb. They are members of that assembly. That's where we are going. Are you getting ready for general assembly? You know sometimes when we are in school, we wrote local exams. Local exams. Your teacher was the one who said the exams. And he said the exam from what he taught you. Whether he followed the syllabus or he did not follow the syllabus was not your problem. You passed. But there is this general exam. United States wide exam. All states are inside it. Your teacher does not know the examiner. 
he has no right to affect the question paper. In fact, the day you were writing the exam, that's the day you saw the question paper for the first time. Friends, are you preparing for the General Assembly? I won't tell you my story because I don't have time for it. But you know, some of us are local champions. But when we come to the General Assembly, we became mediocres. No space. He said, Bragbile, are you not the best? I said, sorry. Best in the village. <laughs> but nothing in the General Assembly. Would you like to pray with me? So that scripture concluded, said, let us therefore receive grace that we may serve God acceptably. For our God is a consuming fire. Please stand up as we pray together. Before I ask Pastor Mark to come and lead us to pray, can you talk to God for yourself just for these two minutes? Can you plead with God this morning? God, I am not the pioneer of this race. It is not in my right to set it as I like. Some of the principles are not convenient for my personal self. But necessity is laid on me to comply. Others have run the race and they are waiting. They have not been glorified because they are waiting for me. I am conscious of the general assembly where all the people that will be admittable there, their names also have been written in the book of life. What are the weights that will not let me run well? I want to lay it apart this morning. Can you lay it apart this morning? Is there anything that easily trips you off? Any sinful habit that has become a problem to your life? That is hindering you from being what God says you should be, my brother? Opportunities here before we get to the General Assembly to make things right. And as we conclude this meeting this weekend, you are going to keep running that race. Can I charge you this morning? Lay apart every weight. Every weight and the sin that will not let you run well. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. As you call on God, this being the last time that we're going to have this kind of meeting together. We started by touching Jesus. And we're about to finish again. Is there any matter that you need to lay aside this morning? And you need to do that deliberately. Is there something, is there a relationship, a friendship, a partnership that has become a weight to your life? Are you in a relationship? He said that that guy is your friend. But since you enter into that love guy relationship, it has become a weight to your life. It has scattered where you are going. The Holy Spirit says, I shall inform you this morning, lay it apart. It's not part of your journey. You will do better without that weight. Where are you? You want to say to God this morning, Lord, I lay it aside. I lay it apart. I want to be ready for the General Assembly. I want to stand among the overcomers. I don't want to be ashamed when the names are called. And I don't want my space to be vacant. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of being a member of this local church where I could hear the word of God. They're only preparing me for the general exams in the general assembly. Lord, help my life. I want to give you a space to make that correct relationship and, and communion with God as our pastor comes over to pray. If you need to do that, please. The altar is narrow, but there's still a space for someone to step in. You want to step out to this altar and say, Lord, I dedicate my heart again. 
as we end this meeting, I renew my commitment. I will run the race. I will do it patiently. I will consult the navigator. I will look unto him who designed the race. I will take instruction from him. I will not despise. I will not worry about shame. I will not be bothered about what others are saying. I will face the man of Calvary with whom I have to deal. God bless you. You want to step out quickly so that we can step forth hands towards you or lay hands on you in prayer that God will help you and that no weight will pull you down and that the Spirit of God will lead you until you see the glory of God breaking forth. It may be painful to, 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 to put aside a particular weight. It may be painful. But it will, it will pay you after all. Because your journey will be smooth. And you will arrive at your intended destination. God bless you. Somebody still needs to come before our pastor prays. Please step out and say, Lord, today I lay aside every weight. Yes, Father, what is unnecessary, Lord? What don't we need? What can we lay aside? What can we say to you, God, Lord, take this from me. Take this burden. Take this extra thing, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, go ahead, saints, cry out to him. Ask him, what is this thing that I'm carrying that I don't need to carry? Let us be like Pilgrim in John Bunyan's story. What is this thing I'm carrying that I don't need to carry? Come on, saints, go ahead. Cry out to him. Ask him. Father, in the name of Jesus, what is it, Lord? Our ears are wide open. Our hearts are responsive. We are ready, Lord. What is the thing? Father, we can never be too sure of our salvation, Lord can never be too sure, Lord God, of where we are destined to go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you, Lord God, that you call to us each and every day. Thank you, Lord God, that you are wooing us to a better race. Thank you, Lord God, that you are helping us to understand when those are trying to cut in on our race, Lord God. Father, we can never be too sure. Father, we look to you. We look to you, Lord God. We look to you, Jesus, as that example, as that model, as our author, as our finisher of all that we are doing. We love you today. We look to you. Lord Jesus, be the strength of our lives. We look to you. And we know, Lord God, that that you saw us. We are that joy that was set before you. We are that joy that you saw in the future. We are those runners that you saw in the future running that race. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, King Jesus. Here's what I would encourage you to do, folks. Take some time today. Get alone with the Lord. Get alone with Him. I, don't, I know that sometimes we, we have set schedules and set plans here on Sunday morning that we can't necessarily get through all the things that we want to get through. And sometimes when we're in this setting, it's easy for us to just rely on somebody around us. Today, get alone with Father. Spend some time with him. Reestablish the pattern of ministry in your own life. Amen, friends? Will you do that? Okay. We're going to do one more thing here at CRBC. We like to bless each other. 
So if you could grab the hand of the person beside you, please. Go ahead, stretch across the aisles. Go ahead, it's okay. Men can grab a man's hand, it's all right. There's nothing weird. All right. Okay, here's what we like to do. We like to... Yeah, the, you folks that need to go uh, catch a flight, please catch a flight. Go, don't miss it, okay? So if you need to go, go ahead and go. All right, here's what we like to do at CRBC. We like to bless each other. So this is the ironic blessing. So we are going to say this three times. The first two times we're going to say it just so that we can get it in our heads. And then the third time we're going to take it away and you say it to your neighbor. No, we won't be that mean. But we're going to ask you to look to somebody and say it. Okay? Let's say this together, everybody, two times. Are you ready? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn towards you and give you peace. One more time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now look to the person next to you and say it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, go rejoicing. I love you today.